Hey guys, today I want to share with you a method that uh, I show all my students for learning all the notes on the fretboard. You know, when I first started playing guitar, uh, you know, I was into Eddie Van Halen and, you know, all I really cared about was like learning uh, Van Halen tunes and, and uh, you know, how Eddie made certain sounds with his guitar and which is all good and everything, but, you know, uh, later on, whenever I got into improvisation and jazz, uh, you know, it became apparent that uh, one thing that was really lacking in my playing was, like, knowing the notes on the neck. Um, you know, I tried to do everything I possibly could to not have to, to learn that, um, like, memorizing, you know, patterns and and so forth and uh which memorizing patterns is not bad but i found myself uh you know working myself to death because i just simply wouldn't you know take the time to learn the notes on the neck and uh anyway so i developed a method uh that uh and it, that's really helped uh myself and then my students uh you know, uh, accomplish this task because, you know, it's overwhelming when you think about, you know, uh, you got six strings and then on every string you have all these notes and, you know, how do you, how do you memorize them all? So, uh, so here's the method. Okay. We're going to start with the D string. Uh, why the D string? Because I find that most players, they pretty much know the E strings and the A string and their weak strings are the D G and the B string. So, uh, so yeah, so we're going to start with the D string. Okay, before we get started with that, uh, I want to talk about something else, which is the circle of perfect fourths. Okay, uh, the reason why is because we're going to use this circle or cycle uh, as a tool to exercise our note recognition ability. Okay, so what is the circle of perfect fourths? Well, uh, first of all, a perfect fourth interval, like if I were to play it on the guitar, uh, for, for example, would be like uh, from D, let me turn my guitar on here, turn up the volume, from D to G. Okay, it's two whole steps followed by a half step. So this is a perfect fourth interval. Or in the guitar, uh, in standard tuning is tuned in perfect fourth intervals um, except for the from the G to the B string that's a major third or two whole steps okay so uh, yeah this uh, cycle of perfect fourths um, it's C F B flat E flat A flat D flat G flat B E A D G okay well that's a lot to remember right so how are you going to remember all that? Okay, well, I'm going to help you out with that. Okay, first of all, let's think of the word bead, like a bead necklace or a uh, bead of water, you know, a water droplet bead. It's spelled B-E-A-D. Now, if you can spell that, you've got, you know, 90% uh, of this thing uh, memorized already, pretty much, okay? So, uh, anyway... Um, so imagine a bead necklace, okay? We're going to use a visualization technique uh, that's going to help you memorize this cycle of perfect fourths, okay? So in your mind's eye, imagine a bead necklace, okay? So uh, most necklaces have a clasp up at the top, okay? Now this clasp is going to symbolize the notes C and F, Okay, now after the clasp, which symbolizes C and F, we have a row of flat beads. Okay, they're flattened out. Imagine flattened out beads, okay? And that's going to be symbolic of B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. Okay, afterwards you have a row of natural round beads, okay? And that's going to be symbolic of B, E, A, D, and G. So again, we have the clasp, right, which is uh, C and F. It's symbolic of C and F. And then we have the row of flat beads, which is B flat, 
E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat, then we have the row of natural beads. B, E, A, D, G, and we're back up at the top. Okay? So by now you should probably have that memorized. Most students that uh, I encounter, you know, once I, you know, show them this visualization technique, you know, they've got it down. Okay, so uh, now, so we're going to just put that cycle on the shelf for now and let's move on uh, with, okay, let's, let's get these notes down on the neck. All right, the first step uh, that I use is let's go up the string in the key of C. Uh, now, the key of C, as you hopefully know already, has no sharps and flats. So as we go up the uh, guitar string, in this uh, instance it's the D string, okay, we look at all the natural notes and where they lay out on the fretboard. So you have D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, and D lastly. Okay, so now here's the thing. As you go up the neck, right, you want to think about uh, where these notes occur in regards to where the dots are on the neck and also where things are that you already know, such as chords, uh, where you tune the guitar, etc. And we're going to use these things as mnemonics to help us memorize these natural notes, where the natural notes are. So, example, okay, so uh, most of us out there already know this is the D string, so that's like in our long-term memory, okay? All right, now what you might not know is this is the E note. Now, how, So what's going to help us remember this is the E note? Well, you probably know this is the E chord. Okay? So when you think of the E note on the D string, think of your E chord. Now let's look at where that is again. Okay, it's on the second fret of the D string. Okay, so that E chord is going to help us remember where that E note is. Okay, so after E, we have F, all right, and that's where your F chord is, and you probably know that already, all right, you probably already know the F chord. Now, if you don't, okay, you would say, uh, okay, well, I'll tie my F note to the E note, okay, you might think that F is E's neighbor, it's a half step away, all right. Okay, so after that, uh, we have the G, G at the fifth fret on a dot, okay. Now, what's uh, significant about this as well? Well, this is where we tune the guitar, right? So when we think about where is G on the D string, well, that's where we tune the guitar. Okay, what's after G? A. Now, A occurs at the seventh fret on a dot, okay? And so, you know, what can help us remember that this is the A note? Well, uh, on most all the strings at the seventh fret, the note that is... Uh, the adjacent string, okay, the adjacent string below is the octave. So uh, here's, you know, you got the A string, and then you have the A here at the 7th fret. And this happens everywhere except on the B string, because, again, the B string is a major third above the G string. Okay, now, if that's not helping you, okay, think of something like... Uh, you know, what would help you remember that A is at the 7th fret? Like A7. There's a sports car called the Audi A7. All right? Not that I own one, but, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, what mnemonic could I use to help my students remember this. And so I went on Google and I typed in A7, and that was one of the first things that came up, uh, the Audi A7 sports car. So maybe that will help you remember that the A is here at the 7th fret. Okay, after that we have B, which is at the 9th fret. Okay, B9, right? What's, what's going to help us remember that B is at the 9th fret? Well, how about a B9 vitamin? Okay, so we've got our B9 vitamin right here at the 9th fret. Okay, now a half step away from B is C. So we can tie C to B in the sense of C is B's neighbor. It's a half step away. So when we think of where is C, well, if we remember B9 vitamin and we know that C is B's neighbor, okay, that's going to help us remember that C is right here at the 10th fret. 
Okay, another thing is C is a whole step down from D, and we know that, or most of you out there probably know the notes repeat here at the 12th fret, all right, that this is D, okay? So we could just remember that, okay, C is going to be a whole step away from D. So the point is to establish some memory devices, some mnemonics, okay, to help us remember where the natural notes are. All right, so... Uh, once we've established that, uh, the next thing is we're going to take the cycle of diatonic force in the key of C, which is C, F, B, E, A, D, G. We're going to use that as a tool to exercise our note recognition. Okay, so if you earlier memorized the cycle of perfect force using that visualization technique of the bead necklace, all right, just imagine this. We're just taking the natural part of that cycle, C, F, B, E, A, D, G, and we're going to use that to exercise, again, the note recognition, uh, exercise our uh, ability to identify the notes that we just talked about. You know, okay, so, uh, so what would we do here? All right, we just do this. C, F, B, E, a, D, G. Okay? And that's the cycle. Now, uh, if, if you're having trouble, you might do this. Okay. Slow it down and say, okay, I know this is C because C is B's neighbor. All right? The B9 vitamin. Okay? F. I know this is F because it's tied to E or, you know, the F chord. Right? So we're saying our mnemonics as we play this. All right? Okay, B, all right, we have the B9 vitamin. E, that's where our E chord is. Okay, A, the Audi A7 sports car. D, I know this is D because it's in my long-term memory. And then G, that's where I tune the guitar. Okay. All right, so after that, um, you want to uh, maybe put a metronome on, the slowest setting, you know, like 40 beats per minute, or... Uh, you could time yourself, and if you time yourself, uh, you establish a time, you know, that it takes you to do this, you know, C, F, B, E, A, D, G, and once that time is established, then try to beat that time, okay, race against the clock, so to speak, okay, to make it fun like a game. All right, so once you've established where all the natural notes are, you've exercised your note recognition with that uh, uh, cycle of per, uh, cycle of diatonic force in the key of C. Now, uh, diatonic that's just means according to the scale. Okay, uh, that's all that means. So we're talking about the cycle of force according to the C major scale. All right, not the cycle of perfect force. Anyway, all right. So we've got that established now. Uh, we want to identify where the flats are, okay? Now, this should be pretty easy. Once you uh, know where the natural notes are, the flats are just going to be a half step below, okay? So uh, uh, we're going to take the order of flats that appear in the cycle of perfect force that you memorized earlier. We're going to use that as a tool to uh, exercise our note recognition, okay, of the flat notes, all right, and then the order of flats is B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. The word bead, okay, with G at the end. All right, so let's do that. So you got B flat, okay, then E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. Okay, and again, you can take, uh, you know, your uh, knowledge of where the natural notes are and just say, okay, well, to find the flat note, I just go a half step below that. And again, you might want to time yourself, uh, establish that time, and then try to beat that time. And, uh, and again, you might want to use the metronome, all right? So once we've established where the natural notes are, we've exercised that, then the flats, right? And by the way, you know, I had a student of mine, I showed him this exercise, and he's like, when are we going to learn the sharps? Well, uh, the sharps are inharmonic with the flats. Uh, for example, uh, B flat is the same thing as A sharp, okay? 
So when you're learning the flats, you're also learning the sharps, okay? So um, anyhow, uh, once we've exercised the naturals, then the flats, then we're going to use that whole cycle of perfect fourths. We're going to uh, exercise that, all right? So that's going to be like this. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G. And when you do this, you want to call out the notes as you're playing them. Uh, and then another thing I recommend is use one finger to do it. You know, don't get into doing, I mean, it's not wrong or, you know, bad to do that, but I would just recommend using one finger to do this. Uh, um, and, and don't, don't uh, play this exercise like you would a lick per se, you know, because that defeats the purpose. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, I had a student that I showed this exercise to and uh, came back the next week and I'm like, okay, so you got this down. He's like, yeah, and he played it for me and he's, you know, playing it like this. And uh, I said, uh, um, I started just kind of giving him a, a random pop quiz and asking him where the notes are and he couldn't find them because he had just learned this thing like a melody or a lick, just kind of memorized the movements as it were and didn't really think about where the notes were. And I'm like, man, that defeats the whole purpose. You really want to think about, you know, where these notes are. All right. Well, uh, I hope this has helped you. And, uh, you know, you take this same idea, okay, and you apply it uh, to all the strings. All right. So, uh, like, for instance, uh, the steps, again, are you will play the key of C, up the neck, and then as you play the key of C, you don't have to start on C, you would start with the open string, but as you play the notes, you want to identify, again, uh, what things occur there that you already know, like whether it be chords, or you might come up with a mnemonic like we did with the Audi A7 or the B9 vitamin, okay? Uh, if you'd like more help with this, uh, just contact me via email and uh, schedule a uh, lesson appointment and we'll get on Skype and I'll help you uh, continue. Another thing, I cover this in my FIT uh, instructional DVD. Uh, I show like all the strings and uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I hope this uh, helps you. If it does, you know, shoot me an email, let me know. And uh, so thanks, yeah, thanks for joining me and uh, see you soon.